Well, okay, my friends, present me with something that wasn't biological. There's nothing that wasn't biological. I showed you the stuff that's up on Mars. These are the sarcomeres. These are muscle sarcomeres with the eroded red um, bloody matrix that's in sarcomeres. I showed you all this stuff. Now, Comet 67P is another one. This is a hip joint in space. There were battles in, in the heavens. They said they were fighting, and they were actual creatures, gigantic creatures. It appears that that's happened. That is an artery blown off in the sunlight because the sun is hitting it and cooking it. Space is, the astronauts say when they come in from spacewalks, they take their suits off and they smell them. Their stu suits smell like steak. And it's the same chemistry, basically, as what is coming off the sun. I'm not kidding you. Now, that is the artery. That's 500 feet across. 500 feet. These are the little blood vessels. So this services the whole thing, and these service all the, the muscles and all that sort of stuff. See, they're shooting out of the holes the direction that they would have fed whatever muscle was there. Now, that's the ankle, I mean a hip joint. Let me show you what it looks like in an anatomical. See, this is the, the, the back side of it, so you can see where the, the this ball transitions over to the bone. This is a pretty, I, go, I look at things very well when I present them, I'm pretty careful to make sure. Now, this is a hip joint. Now, I don't know if it's the same, like it could be an animal, I have no idea. But ours is broken off somewhere up in this area. But they break in different areas. Now, this, um, again, this is the back side of it. Now, there'll be, well, I can show you, hold on. Oh, uh, where did you go? Here it is. This is the ball. It's up inside the socket. You see how there's some tendons hanging off of here? They can hang, go up here so that it can pull and flex and do all these things. These just give it a little bit of a bump. This can pull and make you walk and so forth. These are just little tiny things so that, and they get stiff. These are the things that get stiff, mostly. Now, we're going to see some tendons. We're going to see this thing broken off. We're going to see the ball and everything. Everything's there. Plus, we'll see some red blood. And they did take samples of this. They landed on there. It was called a fillet lander. As a matter of fact, here's what it was. Look at this. Fe, all kinds of iron oxides. That's blood. Carbon um, hydrocarbons. That's blood too. Carbon, sodium. I mean, uh, silicon, sodium, hydrogen, carbon. It's. And they said yes. This is all organic materials. No way for them to account for. It. So don't forget, we got the ball. We got a tendon coming out. We got some muscle here and there, and we're going to have some red, bloody stuff here and there. So let's go see if we can find that. Well, let's look at this. This is the ball. And don't forget, it comes up this way, and there was a, like a, a tendon hanging off, heading up in another direction. These, these little stripes here, those are tendons. That, no question whatsoever. And they break off at an abrupt transition when they start to demineralize and go into muscle. This, I believe, is a bundle of tendon that was heading some other way and just snapped right off. This is from the red blood that would have surrounded this, to some degree, bloody tissue. And that's what they tested here, was this stuff here, and that's what it was. Organic. Now, this will give you a little size comparison. This right here is Raleigh, North Carolina. And that is 67P, the comet we were just looking at. And that, that would be a bad day to be, you know, visiting Raleigh. And the artery is 500 feet across. The artery that feeds this. And then coming up here, it has to feed the little meat and so forth. Look at this. The artery right there is 500 feet across. You saw how big this was compared to Raleigh, North Carolina. And this goes back to 2015. I knew immediately when I saw these exactly what it was. Because there's, there is nothing that isn't biological. And this is on Mars, the same stuff. This is all muscle sarcomeres. 
it's exactly the same as it is on here on Earth. My last video I just put up a short while ago shows all of this in extreme detail. Uh, there's the, there it is right there. Look at it, 40 meters. There's um, I think four of those in here, some something like that. 160 meters, something like that. Probably I think it was 500 feet. I measured. I don't know. All these little balls are what they call dragon balls. And they're little blood vessels that go in to feed the, the muscle that was here at one time. And when they hit just right and they cook, that's when they cook off. That's why they, when they get close to the sun, they're close enough to get radiated. They're not blowing the dust off. They're cooking these things. That's why the astronauts say it smells like steak. It's just the way it is. And even like Benu, I showed this again in the last video. It's a heart. They came back with this and it still has the sar muscle sarcomeres and the phosphate layers, which are the membranes. And psyche is also a heart. And they break right off here where the plumbing is gl literally glued. And this is glued to the heart underneath here. And they just go, pop right off and you end up with these. You see, this is the tendon. You got some of the tendons left, but all of that stuff just, just pops right off. And it drops right down to the valves. Seen it many, many, many times. Okay, I'm just going to keep putting these up because the next one I'm going to do is about um, this little bit that's coming past us 2024. I'm going to show. I have one of those in my shop too. I have one of all of these things. They're body parts. You just have to know what to look for and how to read the signs and look for the arteries and the veins and all of the things that to demonstrate that this was life. Not only that, all the chemistries here. This is not deniable. It's not deniable anymore. It's just, you know, that, well, I don't want to talk about it because it disrupts too much. It is disruptive. There's no question about that. But it is, reality is reality. If they don't go with reality, that's false teaching. I was just saying, repeat what I tell you and everybody will think you're smart. But we now know that it's not true. How can this continue like this? All right, I'm just going to continue putting these things up. Sooner or later, somebody's going to pay attention. I'm being suppressed unbelievably. My channel just absolutely crashed. So it's up to you guys to, to get this looked at. I mean, plus, this is all government funded. You're paying. This is out of your pockets, my friend, my pocket. And it, it, walking around in circles just to collect more funding, saying, we can't figure this out, we can't give us more money and we'll figure this out. No, it's already figured out. And that's how this whole thing started on Mars, right there. That was an impact by Venus. This is wider than the United States. And Venus has the same thing, has a terrible mar across it. And this was all written about in the ancient texts. Velikovsky recorded it in Worlds in Collision. His book was removed from the bookshelves after 11 weeks as number one. 11 weeks, number one on a bestseller list. And they just destroyed him so bad that they had to take the book down off the bookshelves. And he's, he's still, most people didn't even know who he was until I wrote the book about him my book about 2015 because I was so upset nobody even knew this guy and he was a hero of heroes he collected the information all around the world and the academics never even read his book they said did you read his book oh I wouldn't read that nonsense what do you think I'm stupid well yes <laughs> until you can assess something like this right now I'm the same boy they won't look at it and I've had them tell me, you're an embarrassment. I've never listened to a word you say. And that was from, <laughs> uh, never mind, I'm not going to get into it. It's just, just very, very upsetting. And um, Mars, here's the same thing. I'm showing a Mars crab. This is an artery and a vein supplying blood to sarcomeres on Mars. This is from 10 years ago. And I did contact them and I said, these were all muscle sarcomeres. The guys, don't you see, don't, don't you have an anatomist there, a biologist, somebody that, know, that knows about the body? Dead silence. But however, at that time, this was 2015, they did fund 
Yale to do a study to see if, if well, they gave him a bunch of money. And Yale came up and said, yes, they're perfectly preserved. Basically, the mud fossils. Basically, it was my paper. I submitted my paper to Yale a year earlier. And then they, basically, as far as I'm concerned, they just rewrote the paper. They didn't put every single word I had, but they put it, you know, exceptionally preserved. Well, here it is right here. This was the paper they put up. Exceptionally preserved preservation of soft body creatures promoted by silica rich oceans. That's what I said. The silicon fills in all the holes in the places. And or the soft body, yes, <laughs> perfect. And then they also say that this was before there was even any, they say that uh, many of these creatures are outright bizarre in appearance. Well, that's. Uh, yes, I can go along with that. And they don't resemble any organisms alive today. And that's from the Yale people, which I, I presented my stuff to them years before this. And, and with DNA tests and CAT scans and everything else, but they were giant human beings. That was off the table. And they see this right now. This was before there was any... Well, the, the creatures themselves were small, as a few millimeters, as large as a meter. That's a good size piece of slime and they lived in dense diverse things on the sea floor and this was before they say that it was there was no bones or teeth or anything see it says if, how did they fossilize were able to form the animals themselves were entirely soft bodied no they weren't they were just like us they lived before the evolution of shells teeth or bones so they say my stuff is before any real stuff. No. My stuff is all the same thing. They're bones. I'll show you bones. I'll show you a bone right there. But it turned into mudstone. That's not soft body. That was a bone. And as a matter of fact, there actually is still a little taste of bone right there. In the microscope, you can see it. <laughs> it didn't get completely done. And sometimes you'll find them where they were pressed into something solid and the bone actually didn't completely transition. Anyway, they say it was before there was any, they were just jellyfish-like. No, absolutely not. That's not true. And they say it was much richer in silica, yes, which I, I showed all that. The silica fills in all the voids and holes. They say vo um, veins of silica or silicon veins, yes. Anywhere where there's holes, they crystallize and filled in. I have, I have a, a well, hold on. Anyway, this is they they turned into rock over a matter of hours or years. Well, years maybe, not hours. I, although I did tell them it was quick, and I, again, I sent all this stuff to Yale, exactly the same stuff about how all the silicon and about being under the water, and it's actually at the tri Triassic layer, and they say that because this is the Triassic layer, but they're putting it back to 540 million years ago. That's not true. Well, everything, everything you saw here is on the surface of the Earth. It's all on the surface, and I know when it happened. And Velikovsky recorded what was written in the ancient texts. And this is the guy, Derek Briggs at Yale. This is the one I sent all my stuff to. And he told me all that was rocks. And wouldn't, he, wouldn't, uh, he wouldn't look at it. And then, here it is right here, NASA. NASA Exobiology Grant, NASA Postdoctoral Fellowship. Foundation of NASA, Astrobi they, they're giving them tons of money to do what I had already done. It's time this stops. This is, this is crazy. And they're taking credit for my work, first of all. Derek Briggs, apparently. I mean, he's part of this paper. So I'm going to just keep writing, I mean, doing videos showing that this is, this is out of control crazy. And the, who's, who do you think gave that money to NASA to give to Yale? This is just like you know, and that was that goes back to 2016. My paper was 2015, and it was about fascia-facilitated fossilization, which is why these things fossilize so exceptionally well, because of the fascia coating. That's what made them fossilize. But they did transition into mud, or mudstone. You call it mudstone. But that's a bone. There's no question about that. Zero question. And there's still blood in these things. 
inside is where the blood is, but the silicon filled in all of the voids. Where do you see this? You see that? These are two lungs. This one is this lung right here. It's been DNA tested, CAT scanned. I drilled in here. You got to drill inside and you pull out some blood. Or, you know, the bloody matrix. And I sent it off to get tested. I was the one who extracted the stuff. And I did it carefully. I didn't do it with, you know, I, I, I know what I'm doing. But this is just loaded with blood. You can just scrape that away and you get all the blood you want right out of there. Now, this one is completely intact. It even has, this guy must have died like this. And right there is where the heart is. This is a, a left human lung. And it is human. I got the DNA tests all done. A PCR DNA tests. I was the first one in the world to get them done on human beings. And giants, no question. Now, this is the top of the lung. And he died like that. Now, that's all the fabric. This one is nothing but silicon. 100% silicon, basically. You see that? All the fabric stripped away from that lung, like this one, part of the fabric slips stripped away. And you've got the, the lung under here, the alveoli underneath. Some of this stripped away. This one, all of it stripped away. And somehow, and I can't, I can't account for some of this stuff. I don't know how that, this, the exact circumstance, but it completely filled in with silicon. Just like the, the, like a heart. Well, I have hearts here too. There's a heart that's completely filled in with silicon in the chambers of the heart. That's a wall of the heart. Very dense. They twist, and there's a little bit of blood left, and there's the aorta, and um, that's a heart. And this is another heart that I cut open just so I could see the uh, the um, you know the. Uh, heart strings and that sort of stuff. Anyway, this still has a ton of blood in it. It was laying like this, as far as I can remember, I, and this goes back, but it, obviously this is, there was blood in here. And it looks to me like it must have been tipped up this way and the blood sank to the bottom and it completely filled in with silicates, except every now and then where there was one of these little red dots. You see the little red dots? And some of them boiled up like a little bubble of blood. But it's, it, all of this is the alveoli sacs that were inside. And here's the little latch that's on the bottom that latched the, the lung into the body. This one has the same thing, only this has all the pleura still on it. And this is what came out of this lung. Little spots of blood here and there, see? And that's what the inside of a lung is like, is this. The outside of the lung is covered by pleura. So don't forget, I got all this stuff in my shop. Mars, you can't miss that. You just can't, you cannot, cannot be denied. These are sarcomeres in, in rocks. They're everywhere. And the, the, the membranes, as I showed somewhere, I showed how thick they can be, up to six feet thick. Tyson found him, Tyson's Mud Fossil Adventures, he found him six feet thick. I'm going to be looking into this. That's not just a rock in space. You see this? You see that? I got one of these here in my shop, too. I got everything that they got. And they say this is some kind of little rock that's just floating around. No, it's not. And I know what it is, and I will show you on the next video. Oh, I love you all. Bye.